this is just a little video about the games I turn to when I just can't brain no more and uh, the relaxing chill out games which don't require a lot of thought you're not going to find Mage Knight here or anything clever and strategic so if that's the kind of thing you're after if you're after super strategy brain grinding games that are going to blow your mind then this is not the video for you this is um, relaxing games that are easy sometimes family games just that are just so simple and uh, they give me a, just a little feel of adventure and um, don't don't tax my brain at all when I'm just not in the mood for thinking now with this game there are starter rules there are solo rules where you pick a fighter and you try to collect as much treasure as you can and you uh, keep track of your score so it's a beat your own score type of game There's the expanded game rules I've uh, I came up with um, a solo game where you use the whole party and uh, you know again try to get as much treasure as you can before you all end up wounded and uh, so there's lots of uh, fun to be had in this game it's a little uh, bit like dungeon in, in its simplicity but I, I kind of prefer it because of the way the cards work which I'm going to show you so in this game I'm just going to give a very brief explanation I've done a video on it before but I'll briefly explain what it's about and um, then I'll we'll, we'll call back at the end of the game and I'll, I'll talk to you about how it went so one fighter I've not used so far is Wolfgar so I'll see how he can compete with Harold Brand, Gillett and Falcon, who I've used previously. So he's going to go over here. We've got the monster deck, the hazard deck, the feature deck, the treasure deck. All the room cards are spread out. There's a couple of spare room cards left over, so you never know exactly what you've used. The spell cards we don't use because we're not using a wizard, because the solo game from the rules um, is to do with a fighter. The fighter starts with eight hit points so whenever he loses Wolfgar in this case loses a fight he loses one of his hit points when he's lost all of his hit points he retires exhausted from the dungeon and counts up his treasure and compares it to all of his predecessors so we're aiming for 6200 and this is Wolfgar and he's about to enter the dungeon and I shall show you briefly how it works so we go to a room we turn over the room card Museum. This cluttered chamber looks like a museum packed with dusty exhibits. There are all kinds of things here, but your gaze is drawn towards a feature. So we go to a feature card, to a dusty chest. Reinforced with stout bands of iron, you try to lift the lid, but it is locked and you cannot find the key. So you try to pick the lock. With a click, the lock opens, but then a hazard we grab a hazard card then a puff of dust blows out but does no harm you go on searching but there is nothing of interest here so you leave the room so that room is dealt with we go to the next one see what happens here crystal cave your torchlight reflects like stars from thousands of crystals lining the walls of this cave but you have only seconds to look at them before you see a we grab a monster card we see a hobgoblin which runs away when it sees you there's nothing of interest here so you decide to leave the room my goodness we're not doing well at finding treasure are we so we'll go try and find something more interesting here swelling mist you find a chamber filled with a blue swelling mist at first you can make out no details at all but then a menacing shape menacing dark shape looms towards you and forms into a monster card giant spider with its poisonous fangs snapping okay so now we have to fight the spider and how we do that we place our cards next to each other and to hit we need to roll a 10 or more so we roll on our die we get a 12 we defeat the giant spider when the spider is defeated you find a bundle of webs containing a treasure we grab a treasure card a bronze lamp which is worth only 100 gold pieces you search for more treasure but you find nothing and leave the room so if we had not rolled a 10 or more and the spider had retaliated been able to 
do a counter-attack. We would have rolled for the spider. It would have needed 15 or more. It didn't get it. But if it had rolled, say, 17, then we would have lost a hit point and we could then leave the room or stay and fight again. But um, we did get the treasure, so we shall move on. Well, Wolfgar didn't do too well. Uh, 5,100 gold pieces with his final haul. Um, he was defeated by a giant spider. Uh, we only had two rooms left to go. But uh, of all the crazy adventures we went through, we went through all these um, strange things like silent statues, a glint of gold, a great hall. We fought a skeleton, we went to the forge, fought a mummy, a hobgoblin, had to disarm a slashing blade, we went to the laboratory, uh, we fought a troll, a medusa, a giant rat, a dragon, a gargoyle, uh, an ogre. We had to deal with a falling slab. Uh, there's a hall of mirrors, a choking cloud, a pit of fire, a poison dart, all these wonderful things, minotaur, giant spider again, and a whole goblin that just ran away, and uh, a little a little deck of uh, crazy fun adventures, and the way they just follow on from each other, like if we'd have defeated the giant spider we would have drawn another uh, feature card, which might have been a secret compartment, and then we would have drawn a hazard card, so we grabbed that, and that was a lightning bolt, if we'd have disarmed that, we could have grabbed another treasure card. And um, the way the cards go from one to another, you draw from the next deck, you draw from a different deck, you draw from a treasure deck, you draw from a hazard deck. It works really nicely. It's nice and simple. Um, you know, you can switch off your brain and just have a, a silly little adventure just wandering around. It's, uh, it's nice. And this is another of my brain-free favourites. No uh, no criticism included in that at all because sometimes I really need a game where I don't have to use my brain. Now I only play the solo game of this so I'm going to set it up accordingly. I've, uh, I think I made a previous video about this but um, as included here um, I think it's still pretty cheap on Amazon and you get all these wonderful wooden components so um, I'll set it up and show you roughly how it works. So these things are used for the multiplayer game, so we don't need them. What we do need is the rule of four. We have four survivors, four bullets, four adrenaline, which are used to escape injury, and four gas, which are used to escape full stop. So we take the level three cards, we take four out. We take the level 2 cards, we take 4 out, we shuffle them of course, we take the level 1 cards, we take 4 out, we go through 8 rounds, at the end of the 8th round we reach our destination and uh, we see how many points we've got. These uh, tokens will come in handy along the way. And at the end of the score we match up how well we've done and it will tell us if we are really really good or really really rubbish. So at the beginning we have two cards at the top which are face down. We have a card face up and a card face down in the middle and at the bottom both cards are face up. Now we want victory points and we want resources. If we take the bottom row which we can see we pay two resources to do that. If we take the top row, which we can't see, we gain two resources of our choice when we choose to take that row. In the middle, we don't gain or lose anything in taking that row, but uh, we have to make our choice and stick to it. So we've got a lot of bullets here, one victory point. This could be a problem. Um, that can go wrong, so we'll see. But I'm going to go for the top row and therefore we dump those cards there and I'm going to take two resources. I'm going to take some bullets and some adrenaline. And I'm going to turn over the first card. What does it tell me to do? I gain a bullet and some adrenaline, first of all. Adrenaline is always useful to have. And so are all the other resources. If you turn over a card and there's a big old fight, 
but there are no victory points you might want to use two gas tokens to just get away from it because even if you defeat it you're not going to get anything so we've taken our two resources uh, we have a fight with four zombies and um, if we defeat that we gain one victory point so we'll grab four zombie tokens here and the first thing you do when you start a fight initially is you can choose to do some ranged combat which means spending bullets so I am going to spend two bullets you get two dice for each of these tokens that you spend so I'll spend two of those I'll get four dice and I'll roll them and we only need to worry about targets here so we've got three targets so we've killed three zombies this doesn't mean anything when we're doing ranged combat so we take away three zombies we've got one zombie left and then we go into hand-to-hand -hand combat so we take one die for each of our bods so that's five dice now this can come up with wounds and stuff and adrenaline which uh, can make life a little bit more complicated so we've got a wound there so if I don't spend adrenaline for this uh, one of our bods will die so I'll spend some adrenaline we have one hit and one adrenaline so if we spend another adrenaline we can get an extra hit but we don't need to because we only need to kill one zombie and the same applies for these adrenaline here I could spend an adrenaline to kill another zombie but we only need to get rid of one so he's gone but we did have to spend one there but we've got a victory point so that's good so that card is ours it counts towards our victory points at the end and then we move on to this one which just says we get two gas tokens which are always useful for trying to escape ain't gonna lie it's not been great but we have the we're in stage eight this is the final stage no victory points available here don't know about that but I'm gonna go for the top one I think and for my you know you you pay two resources to do this you don't pay or gain any resources to do this when you choose and the top one you gain two resources before you have a look at what they are so I'm going to go for the top one hoping that there's some victory points I get two resources which I will choose as bullets and fuel now just two survivors and myself oh my goodness that's awful I'm going to spend two fuel to get past that because there are there's three horde symbols there so that means when you roll your dice I will be using those three because I've only got three survivors if I had five survivors I'll be using that but I need to use three horde dice I'm not because I'm not going to gain anything from that so I'll use my two fuel to bypass that not going to get any victory points this is the final card spend one f uh, fuel or you lose a survivor okay I'll spend one fuel and that is the end of my journey not gonna lie it's not been great um one two three four victory points from that I picked up the map token if you have a map token it is worth six points so six seven eight nine ten ten points there now for each survivor and each type of resource so you get a matching set of three you get one point so 10 11 12 13 now if I consult the rule book 13 is good sorry it's glary but uh, 13 is good but I did have a fun little adventure doing a road trip across the zombie infested wastelands of the US trying to get to California um, a nice simple game I've never played the multiplayer game but um, this is a, a fun little diversion for 10 minutes and uh, have a crazy sort of walking dead type of adventure now is this a clever brilliant game no but do I find it relaxing yes is it demanding on my brain no it even comes with some short stories at the back which is very nice indeed now it's a bit glary the board never mind 
I've uh, blinged my game with some extra coins, so I've got more than you actually get in the base game because um, it's fun. So I'm going to pick a hero at random. I'm going to be the doctor. Cool. Um, there's a good few other characters you choose from each with their own special ability. So the doctor's ability is I can heal one wound by spending one experience coin. So that is very useful. So I'll put the other characters away. So what I need to do is make my way through this massive deck of cards. Now I don't have the expansion. This is plenty for me. So there's my doctor with his four experience. And um, we're going to start making our way through these cards. Now we've got four boards here. We draw four cards at the beginning. So there's a Bayaki. That belongs over here. There's a Maigo. That also belongs over here. So that blue board is becoming a problem straight away. A uh, cultist leader, that goes over here to Cthulhu. And finally, an Elder Sign. This is a special item. You can choose to buy it or not. Discard instead of suffering sanity loss. I might buy that because um, sanity loss can be a problem. So I'll, I'll spend one experience to buy that item. Now we've got this to deal with. So these are our main dice. We have our health die and our other two dice which we used to fight with. Um, I'm going to start attacking these guys. So we've got these uh, this handy cheat sheet. We can cast spells. Um, we can spend one experience to gain a spirit die. Um, we can hurry after we've done a one attack. We can do another attack by spending two experience. And we can heal, but as we're a doctor, it only costs us one to heal. And we can seal the gate by spending three experience. So I'm going to attack these bods by rolling my normal dice. Let's put the dice tray here so you can see what's going on. Oh, I dropped that one on the floor. Here we go. So, oh, we've got a wound. We roll a one on the health die. We've got a wound. We've got a six. We can re-roll this. Six. We've got two sixes. We can get rid of those, but we do suffer a wound. So we've dealt with two cards, but now, as we're wounded, we uh, only have two dice, but we are the Doctor. So normally healing would cost three. It only costs one. We'll spend that. We are no longer wounded. So... Uh, do we want to hurry? We've only got two coins left, so we can spend those to hurry and we'll do another attack. Um, I think we'll attack the cultist leader, obviously, because that's the only enemy left. Um, oh my goodness, another wound. Five, so we do do enough damage, but we are now wounded again. So we'll have to wait to get more experience in order to spend one for our doctor to uh, heal ourselves. So then we draw another four cards. If we draw a gate, we will need to draw an extra card for the gate. If we draw a sleeping horror, it comes in face down. If there are no minions, not enough minions to awaken it, it comes in face down. If it's face up, we're in a world of trouble and we'll have to pay the sanity costs of how powerful it is. Or we'll have to sacrifice one of our uh, companions if we've got any. So the game continues. And that is just how random it is. We've drawn three um, minions here. We have a three dice horror. The three minions awaken the three dice horror. So we need to pay the three experience sanity cost or sacrifice one of our followers. We have one experience. Uh, we've drawn a gate, so we're even in more trouble than that. Uh, so we cannot pay the experience cost. Therefore, we have been defeated by the ghastly fiends uh, here on this board so um, not a long game sometimes but uh, sometimes sometimes I, a couple of times I've, I've got through the whole deck but um, more often than not it all goes horribly wrong because um, randomness but entirely random no thought required uh, but um, crazy Cthulhu nonsense And uh, I think the reason I'm making this video is because um, I saw something on the Dungeon Dive Facebook group uh, said by Johan Vorster, who's going through a bit of a, a funk, he said, with his um, gaming. You know, he was doing some 
group RPG stuff, but not really uh, getting into much solo stuff. And I think the games I'm covering here are I, I find easy to just get into. Like if and you know I love playing solo board games. I really enjoy it as a hobby, but sometimes it seems to be like there's ages or maybe a month or, or so between games and uh, I go through phases of not playing as much and then I'll have a big big old session of about three games in a night or something and it will usually take something like Legend of Heroes or Crypt of Chaos or um, The Cards of Cthulhu a simple simple game that's easy to get to the table and easy to get into that will get me playing again and then hopefully move me on to more uh, involved games I mean this is becoming involved for me in a way because when you finish a game it it, um, it sort of takes on a different uh, feel because you know I've completed it and now I want to complete it again uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll feel more invested in it um, more, more so than if it was a, a casual game uh, which it initially was but now there are stakes because I want to win again. Um, I'm going to be bell blood today. Um, this is a nice, nice, simple dungeon crawl. Uh, no dice involved, which is um, upsetting for me because I love dice. But um, it's a great game. It, really simple, you know, dungeon crawl. Great fun. So I'll use a little green guy because I'm a, an orc. And uh, we've got some crazy fun artwork there. And um, there's no mystery behind this bloodthirsty orc's reasons for accepting the challenge. There might be goblins in the crypt. Baleblood utterly detests goblins. He has one attack on one defence, and I need to remember to include those when I have a fight, because I sometimes forget. And he starts with health of 17. His special item, skill or ability is the orc's all-consuming hatred of goblins induces a powerful bloodthirsting rage within him so violent that his attack score is increased by plus three when fighting goblin guards so whether that means i'm guessing that makes that up to four then increased by plus three so he attacks goblin guards with a plus four for his attack so let's set this up and uh, I'll, I'll show you how it starts so what we have to do to win is we must have the Key of Freedom, the Lost Sword, which are both hidden in treasure chests, and we must find the exit and defeat any monsters that bar my way, including the dragon, without losing all of my health points. So I've got to find my way to the exit with the key and the sword, defeat the dragon, go home happy. So we start from dungeon level one. So we turn over the start point here we could place this anywhere let's let's stick it here so there's nothing there so we may as well just shift it along here and grab another uh, card and we've got a bad guy here we can place it anywhere so we've got a green chest there so we'll put a green chest card there and um, this is a crypt crawler so we'll grab him and put him there so we've not got any weapons yet or no any extra uh, weapon bonuses and stuff so we're just gonna go in and have a fight so let's um, shuffle our combat cards here we go now in this first round we're gonna go in and we're gonna attack and in the first round the monster always gets a uh, counter attack even if I defeat them with one go so I pull this I get plus two, I get plus one from my attack, so that's plus three. His health is five, so that goes down to two. So from five, he's gone down to two health. However, I've not defeated him, and uh, the monster gets to attack me. I have a defense of one, so he does a plus three, that's horrendous. So that's plus five in total. I have a defense of one, so I've got um, that, I reduce that to plus four. So I have to take away four from my health. So I'm already down to 13 health. That's not great. I could try and run away, but um, I'm not going to. I'm going to attack again, adding one to my attack here. So that's plus two. So I defeat him. And because it's not the first round and I've defeated him, 
he doesn't get to retaliate because I've killed him off. So I turn this guy over to show that he's been killed off because sometimes creatures can be resurrected and that's never good. And I'm going to have a look at this green chest. It could be a trap, it could be something useful. Let's have a look. Amulet of Awareness. This crystal warns of crossbows and gas. All traps now inflict only minus one health damage. That's great. I shall keep that. Um, other things I can find are weapons which will add to my attack, uh, armor which will add to my defense, and other useful stuff. But there are also traps in these chests, so I shall carry on. Well, sadly, we were defeated by a rock troll over here. Um, but we did get the Boots of Bounding, the Skull Crusher, the Helmet of Hope, the Amulet of Awareness, the Lost Sword, which was one of the items that we needed. We just needed to find the key and then find the exit and defeat the dragon and then we'd get out. But um, sadly we didn't make it. Never mind. It was a nice little little battle. Fight, fight a few monsters. Over, well, overcome a few traps. Um, get hit by a load of traps. <laughs> and um, yeah, ni nice and simple. Um, no brain power really involved. You just pick your route, um, explore as safely as you can, leave monsters unless you really need to fight them, and um, be careful about what chests you open because you know if you go through a certain number of chests of each colour, anything. Well, I've got some good things, so the remainder might be traps. So, um, but anyway, uh, a fun little game. And when it comes to the classic casual game, Escape the Dark Castle is hard to beat. It's been a while since I've played it and I think we are overdue. So we've got the Miller and the Tanner. As you probably know, if you watch this channel, you'll probably be in the, in the same world as, as the these kind of games. You've got 15 chapter cards and a boss at the bottom. And you've got your starter card. Um, you can get cool expansions for it. Um, with uh, these things which are special skills so you can draw one for your for each character if you want defined once per game at the beginning of any round of combat you may change any number of chapter dice to show the results of your choice so that's a one-time thing for this character here and for the tenor let's grab skeptical once per game when item cards are drawn you may discard any number of them and draw replacements so we can do that once in the game We've got our items here, so let's just kick off. Having finally escaped your wretched cell and in your haste to seek out the exit of this abominable place, your very first steps of exploration lead you down an errant path, a dead end. Shuffle one chapter card into the castle deck now. I shall do that in a moment. All is not lost, however. This particular dead end appears to serve as some manner of storeroom. You quickly take as much as you can carry. Draw two item cards per player now. Strange distant sounds begin to fill the air and you sense your absence has now been noticed by your captors. They are coming for you. Turn the chapter card now. Right. So um, the collector's box, it contains some brilliant stuff like alternate beginnings, um, extra bosses and all sorts of amazing things. However, the box itself is stupidly huge. There's no need for it to be that big because everything fits in the normal box. So to have something that's almost the size of like Shadows of Brimstone or Gloomhaven for a very light game like this just seems ridiculous. But um, the things you get in the collector's box are absolutely great. So I'm going to shuffle uh, how many? One extra chapter card into here and we'll, we'll get weaving and draw our two items per player. And the key to this game, if there's any strategy in particular at all, is resting your characters to try and get their health back. Um, because you, when you're in a fight, more often than not, you can rest one of the characters and they can get a little bit of health back. And uh, that's how you kind of keep going. But um, as far as strategy goes, it's not a strategy game, but it is, it is a fun game. They each have a custom die with different abilities reflected on those. So, uh, excellent. Let's turn the first chapter card and just show you how it starts. You pass a dusty alcove where an imposing suit of armour is displayed. As you admire its impressive size, it suddenly moves, stepping from its mount and drawing its blade. Begin combat. Combat special. You 
I've nominated the Miller as you. This came with a collector's box, I think. Are terrified by the possessed suit of armor and cannot block during this combat. And these symbols mean we grab um, an I for not cunning. Two of those, two wisdom or whatever it is. And we have two um, per player, this means. So uh, there's two characters, we've got two extra dice, and we can use, if you've got the collector's box, the death dice, which, um, so when that is indicated, dice per player, you can use death dice instead. So we roll those randomly, and they have come up as shields, so we've got to get doubles, but um, in order to get rid of those shields, but the characters can work together. So we shall see how that goes. So we know that the Miller cannot block in this round or the Ith in this fight. We've got a uh, discard during any round of combat to prevent an enemy attacking that round. We could use that. Okay. We're both going to have a go. The Miller's going to attack. He gets a Might. That's not very useful. The Tanak attacks with a shield, so she's protected, and she's got rid of two of these. Hmm. So she's not going to lose two hit points, but this guy is. Uh, whenever you take damage, reduce the amount by one. So he will take one damage. That is a good thing. We go to the next round. You may change any number of chapter dice to show the results of your choice. Okay, we're going to change these shields, I think. Um, we have a lot of that. Yeah, we're going to use this card to change these chapter dice. Cool, he's used his one-time ability. And now we're going to hopefully make some headway. We've got one of those. And she's got one of those, that's not so good. But um, we do get rid of that. He loses one health, and she unfortunately loses two because she's not got a shield. She'll attack on the next round. He cannot block, so that shield won't count. Ah, oh, she keeps rolling those. She's only got one of them, and she keeps rolling them. Um, so he takes one damage because of his shield, and he can't really get rid of those because we haven't got any uh, inspiration, um, wisdom, sorry. Yeah, it's not going well right now. She's down to 14, but we can't really let her rest, unfortunately. Just got to apply a single cunning, we might do that. He's rolled that, that's no good because he can't block. She can block. Apply a single cunning, that's not really much help. I'm rolling all the wrong things right now. So he loses one. She blocks, so she doesn't lose any. But we're not making any headway. That's not bad. We just need some wisdom if we can. Yes. We can get rid of one of those. We can club together on that. Um, he loses one. She loses two because she hasn't got a shield. And we've just got one more die to get rid of. That's a mite. That's no good. Yes, right. We'll discard this to apply a single cunning. So um, that's that item used up. And we've got this. So the knight is defeated. Wow. So we can choose an item, item card. Oh no. Your soul is tainted with a deep agitation. Your mood becomes foul. Your lust for violence dominating your actions. You cannot rest in combat. Place this card beside your character card. It cannot be removed. Oof. That's terrible. So I'll I'll apply that to the to my you character because they, they both worked together on that one to uh, defeat the knight. 
and uh, that's not great. So some of these item cards that you pick up from the expansions and stuff, they uh, can have bad things as well. So I shall carry on with the game. OK, we're quite near the end now. We've faced this uh, magic mirror here and I don't suspect that we're going to be carrying on much longer because we're facing doppelgangers of ourselves. Yeah, so um, we have one hit point left for the Tanner. She's got a shield. The Miller's got the living stone, so he's been resurrected a couple of times already because it doesn't say you discard it. At least not here anyway. He's rolled that. OK, so uh, he's got rid of one of those and he's protected. He's blocked this round. The Tanner, she's got rid of one. However, her shield reduces her damage to a minimum of one and I'm afraid it's game over. Uh, a wonderfully fun, uh, enjoyable, uh, casual game. Lots of chunky dice. And um, just a nice game when you... All of these games suit me when I I just don't have the brain power for anything more involved and I just want to roll some dice and have a bit of an adventure. So that's basically what this video is about. Sometimes you you go into a bit of a funk in the, in the hobby and, um, you know, it's difficult to break out Gloomhaven or whatever. So um, a nice, simple, laid-back, not necessarily strategically clever or indeed... Um, objectively impressive uh, game wise but um, fun crazy times rolling dice drawing cards and seeing what happens creating a, a little a little adventure that's not demanding on the old brain cells